we can look now how these uncertainty sources are accommodated by our model. And this can be seen here. So all of these uncertainty sources are somehow linked to different input quantities in the model. So that in our case we can consider that our model is good and is suitable for this analysis that we intend to carry out. The next step is finding values for the input quantities. And let us start by finding the values for the slope and intercept of the calibration graph. And calibration graph perhaps needs some more explanation. So I will give a little bit more information about it. For building a calibration graph, we need to prepare a series of calibration solutions. And in our case, there are five calibration solutions and we can denote them by small volumetric flasks. So, each of them has different concentration of ammonium ion. And let us denote the concentration by C1, C2, C3, C4, and C5. And with each of these solutions, we make photometric measurement. We measure the absorbance, and we get the absorbance values, which we can denote likewise by A1, A2, A3, A4, and A5. And in fact, calibration graph is nothing else than the measured quantity, which in this case is absorbance, plotted against the concentration. So that there is the absorbance axis, concentration axis. And these concentrations C1, C2, C3, C4, and C5 can be seen here. And if we now plot them together with their absorbance values, we get a series of points on this calibration graph. So that it will eventually look something like this. And obviously, the absorbance values are here. And usually, if the method is linear and spectrophotometry is well known for being highly linear, then the calibration graph can be described by a linear function, meaning a straight line. So, here it is. And the straight line can always be denoted by a simple linear equation, which in our case would be A is equal to B0 plus B1 multiplied by concentration. And those constants B0 and B1, they are found from linear regression analysis. And there are different factors that cause the uncertainty of these regression coefficients. First of all, all these concentrations 
which in turn have all the volumetric operations as their uncertainty sources and also weighing of the standard substance. But secondly, also the uncertainties of the absorbance measurement are also important so that the uncertainties of all these quantities, we see 10 quantities here, which in turn have also sub-quantities, all these uncertainties finally for us are translated into uncertainties on B0 and B1, which eventually take into account the uncertainty due to calibration. And now, if we want to find from this calibration graph the concentration of our sample, then how do we do? We have the absorbance value of the sample, let's say, yeah. And from this absorbance value, we can find the concentration in the sample solution. It's important to note that this C is only the concentration of the sample solution, not yet the concentration of the analyte in the sample itself. And this transformation in mathematical terms would look like this. or to be more exact, and this is in fact the same as the first term of our model equation that we use for this measurement. An important thing to take into account here is that the absorbance of the sample should be in between the absorbances of the standards, meaning there should always be at least one below and at least one above. Then it is correctly carried out. Now, this calibration graph can be seen here, and the calibration equation is here, and with the actual values that we have for our concentrations and for our absorbances, we get the intercept and slope as can be seen here. So that this equation down here is the actual calibration equation with the real values of slope and intercept inserted. Let us now see the other quantities and they have been here now compiled into this table. So the absorbance value for the sample can be seen here, intercept and slope we spoke about and dilution factor and this additional quantity are seen here and as I already mentioned this quantity carries value zero meaning that it does not influence the value of our result, it only influences the uncertainty of our result.